Remember, remember, the 5th of November, gunpowder, treason and plot. I see no reason why gunpowder treason should ever be forgot. V for Vendetta is one of those films that I watch every year on a particular date, 5th of November, bonfire night, purely because I'm a big grump and I hate fireworks. <laughs> I, I cannot think of anything worse than standing out in the cold, just wrapped up as much as you can, gloves, scarf, everything, you're freezing your ass off just to watch a bonfire and fireworks go off. Yeah, I'm a grump, I hate it, so I'd rather sit at home and watch V for Vendetta. <laughs> And I do really like this film just due to my particular interest in uh, just history, basically, just the interest in uh, Guy Fawkes and uh, just just how all that came about, basically. It's, it's very interesting and it's a big part of English history. So Viva Vendetta, we're in a future dystopian England and we have V, our anarchist freedom fighter, who stages a series of terrorist acts in attempt to ignite a revolution against the fascist regime. The beauty of this film is that I'd say it has a really nice balance of entertainment and a uh, political message. Really nice balance. And Alan Moore, the creator of the graphic novel, was actually really critical about this film, uh, basically saying that he considers that they exploited American neoliberalism versus neoconservatism, whereas I, I, I disagree about this. I kind of think it just depends on your own interpretation. When you watch this film, what do you see? And I think being an English person, and obviously with it being set in England but made by Americans, I kind of take on board my own interpretation and I understand what was trying to be achieved. You know, it is, it's anarchy versus fascism and I I think it's, it's fantastic and you see all that and so I'm not too sure how, why he criticises it so much. It's such um, a shame when it's his own work but I think it's a wonderful film. You know, it's all about the anti-establishment, you know, Anarchy is clearly our lead, V. He's breaking down a structure. I love the whole theme that he's creating chaos with an idea. Just planting that small idea and creating just ultimate chaos. It's just wonderful to watch. And then with the fascist behaviour, we have uh, John Hurt in the role of High Chancellor, which two things there, you know, we've got John Hurt, which uh, is from 1984, and that's kind of a nice nod there, I think. It's like, if you're going to cast someone, you've cast someone from 1984, which also has this dystopian nature and all like very similar themes. So that I love. And then uh, High Chancellor, straight away, you kind of think, well, Germany, Hitler, fascist, you know, it's all there, all rolling out. Uh, we've got curfews, people have to live by these curfews, and we also have censorship. The film is considered an action film, but I really do not consider it that at all. It has like two action scenes in this film and the rest is all dialogue. So if you can't handle that, this, this is not the film for you because, wow, it's like just constant. It's really coming at you, but the beauty of it is you listen to every word. And that's just down to the descriptive, gritty script that we've got and the perfect delivery by the actors and especially by Hugo Weaving. Just the voice prodigy. <laughs> he is marvellous. He can just do any voice. He just reels it off and he's wonderful and he's just so charismatic and he delivers all of his lines beautifully. I mean, there's a moment where he says like about 50 words that begin with V and it's like one of those moments where you're just like, oh, that's so beautiful and poetic to my ears. You know, the man's charismatic and just his voice work is captivating. And we've got a film here where all the performances are great. You know, Natalie Portman's character's growth in this film is fantastic from just like this you know, girl that's just getting on with her life to like them meeting V and just the the roller coaster ride that she goes through, just the journey of that is just wonderful. Though the only thing is her English accent is appalling. <laughs> oh 
how how they thought she could get away with that, I don't know. It's it's yeah, it's it's up there on worst accents list. And then we've got these supporting roles that are just great, you know, they really lift the film and people to mention would definitely be Stephen Rea, Rupert Graves and in particular Stephen Fry. It's just uh, wonderful to see him in a film like this because of just his charismatic nature and just how he delivers his lines is just, you know, captivating. So supporting roles and the lead roles all just make this really wonderful film, you know, and what as well makes this film just so spectacular is the soundtrack. The composer, Dario Marinelli, oh, got distracted then, I thought someone was in the room. <laughs> There's just like V standing in the corner. <laughs> oh, speaking of which, actually that's just prompted me about the film. Uh, there's this beautiful moment in V for Vendetta with, well, different moments where V will be standing like in a corner or a certain area of the camera and due to like the lighting, uh, just like the cinematography, the, the the way that they change the lighting, uh, it's beautiful just to make him appear like that and that's what I thought just happened in that corner of the room, so that kind of freaked me out a bit. Um, but yeah, this is the first feature by James, um, I believe it's uh, McTeague, I'm not too sure how you say his name unfortunately, but he really uh, excels to say this is his first feature film and with the help of the cinematography, uh, we've got the lighting and just the action sequences alone, uh, it's just, it's, it's great entertainment. And going back to the music composer, before I freak out again thinking there's someone right there, um, just beautiful score and it really lifts, you know, the film. Uh, there's a particular song called Evie Reborn and you can actually find that in the Interstellar trailer at the moment, they keep playing that on that. And it's just wonderful, it's just like it sends sort of just my hairs up and yeah, it really adds to the film and there's also the perfect nature of picking other songs that aren't the score, you know, just like songs from the jukebox and stuff. Just every everything about this film I just think is wonderfully picked and they've really thought about it and uh, yeah, like that's all I can say. It's a wonderful piece of entertainment, great political message, uh, the cinematography, just yeah, and Hugo Weaving. Hugo Weaving is what makes this film. I, I can't hide that. You gotta love him. <laughs>